Hello everyone, thanks for tuning today's first video. We're going to do the ECMWF 30 day look ahead for today's first video. Uh, so going through the next four weeks of temperature and precipitation anomalies from the ECMWF model to see what uh, the ECM model is forecasting for the UK and for the rest of Europe too uh, for the next four weeks. This takes into the second half of August. So uh, I'll go out for you very shortly, uh, just to say that today's second video will have all of the latest information on the possibility or the um, definite certainty of uh, very hot weather coming up over the next few days. It's hot today. It's going to get hotter in the days ahead. Thursday is going to be uh, a really, really hot day, potentially a record breaker. So have all the detail on that for you in today's second video update, which will be coming up this afternoon. On the homepage, uh, for this update, we're at the Hungarian Met Office. A big thank you to uh, them for supplying us with these charts. We can't show you 500 millibar heights or mean sea level pressure anomalies, but you can get a broad idea from the temperature and precipitation anomalies of what MOD is forecasting in terms of the overall pattern. So we begin with the week one temperature anomaly, week 30 for the year, week one for our forecast period. It's taking us from the 22nd to 28th of July, looking very warm and hot in the west of Europe in the week ahead. In fact, most parts of Europe are looking warm and hot. So we've got Scandinavia here uh, up to uh, most places between three and six degrees above average, some parts of central Norway into Sweden. 6 to 10 degrees above average. This heat then uh, continues into central parts of Europe, Germany and Poland, widely 3 to 6 degrees above average. Very hot through uh, France and the low country, some places uh, across uh, France, up to 6 to 10 degrees above average, intensely hot uh, there. And uh, also into the UK and Ireland, it's warmer than average, substantially so. Most parts of the UK, particularly central and eastern parts of England and Scotland, are 3 to 6 degrees above average. Ireland is 1 to 3 degrees above average. Down into the Med, it's a hot scene as well. Through most parts of the Med, significantly above average temperatures between around 1 and 6 degrees above average. You will notice that it looks a lot cooler on the eastern side of Europe. So from west of Russia... From the west of Russia down into Ukraine to the Black Sea, some parts of the extreme southeast of uh, Europe and in towards uh, Greece and Turkey, actually a little bit below average with the temperature anomaly. It will still be hot in uh, countries like Greece and Turkey, uh, but the overall anomaly is a little bit below average there in the east and the southeast of Europe. So obviously the pattern is one where we've got a ridge through uh, through many central western parts of Europe and just got a trough in the east of Europe and the jet stream is probably going to be doing something a little bit like that in uh, the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies look like this. So it backs up what I was just saying. Where it's coolest, it's also uh, a little bit on the wet of an average side of that extreme east and southeastern corner. However, most parts of Europe are forecast to be uh, drier than average, especially through the central as a central swathe uh, from the Balkans and Italy going up to Scandinavia. Again, we see uh, most places looking drier than average under a ridge of high pressure. Not as dry out in the west of Europe, but it's still large on the dry and every side uh, through Spain, Portugal, France, even into parts of England and Wales, it's slightly uh, drier than average. But further north and west, actually, it is rather wetter for parts of Scotland and Ireland. So again, it just tells us that we've got this area of low pressure sitting to the west. We've got high pressure uh, to the east, and then we will have more. We would have more low pressure uh, around there, and very much a trough ridge trough type um, pattern with the jet stream. Moving on to week two, which is week 31 uh, for the year. This one takes us from the 29th of July to the 4th of August. Again, also a very warm scene across many parts of Europe, especially through the central region. So from France over towards Germany and Poland, we're still seeing temperatures of, uh, of 3 to 6 degrees above average, so significantly hotter than average for the central parts of Europe during, uh, the, uh, during the second week, period, taking us from July 
July into August. Up Scandinavia, a lot more than average up there too. Temperatures three to six degrees above average. UK and I not quite as warm, but even so, still above average temperatures uh, there. Most parts of the Med looking pretty warm uh, as well, away from Portugal, where it's a little bit cooler. Uh, there, but through most parts of uh, the Med, from Spain over towards Italy and even over the Adriatic into the Balkans, generally warmer than average. Until we come down to this extreme southeast corner again, temperature normally then are a little bit mo modest. Notice how cool it is across the west of Russia, down to the Black Sea, and through eastern parts of Ukraine. Very uh, significantly cold of an average. Now, I do say cold of an average because we're talking about temperature uh, anomalies that are going down on the scale to three to six degrees below average. So we're three to six degrees above average in the central western parts of Europe, and we're three to six degrees below average in the east or uh, in the west of Russia. So uh, real contrast there uh, from uh, Europe to western Russia in the second week. Generally dry and average through uh, most parts of Europe in uh, week two as well. So this is a precipitation anomaly from the 29th of July to the 4th of August. Most places are looking uh, drier than average, so significantly so through these northern and eastern parts of uh, Europe. A little bit less so through central and western areas. But most places generally favour uh, generally favour being a little bit drier than average. Even to the UK and Ireland, we're sort of on the drier drier side of average, if you like. So um, there's also going to be plenty of dry weather there as we go through to month's end and into the beginning of August. Week three, temperature anomalies are still looking pretty warm across most parts of the Europe. So this is the fifth through to the 11th of August, above average temperature anomalies by one to three degrees above average through most areas. Those cooler or colder than average temperature anomalies in west of Russia down to the southeast corner, they are fading, so it's going to warm up a little bit there, but uh, but uh, it's still on the um, cooler side of average. Most parts, though, of Europe are more than average. For Ireland and the UK and down into France, we're sort of one to three degrees uh, above average. So again, it's a pretty warm week coming up there as we go through to week three. Precipitation-wise, from the 30th and 11th of August for week three of our forecast period, a uh, bit dry on average to the northeast of the UK. So sort of going up towards Scandinavia, it's a little bit dry on average there, perhaps hinting at a Scandinavian high getting going. At this point, otherwise, we begin to lose the signal for precipitation as we often do by the time we get through to weeks three and four. Much weaker signals uh, there, so most places are kind of like going to average or uh, really no signal with their precipitation anomaly. The far north of Europe looks drier, otherwise, there's not really uh, enough to be able to decipher what's going on with precipitation then. And finally, we come through to week four. It's week 33 for 2019. It's uh, week four for our forecast period. It takes us from the 12th through to the 18th of August, going into the second half of the month. And again, it's a largely warmer than average scene for most parts of Europe. No sign of anything particularly cool coming up away from Western Russia uh, during, uh, during the next four weeks. So above average temperature anomalies continue here, especially again, through these central and northern areas. Uh, once more, we see temperature anomalies in those areas, one to three degrees above average, widely up to a degree above average across most northern parts of Europe. Through the Mediterranean, uh, closer to average there, but uh, probably still a little bit on the dry and average side, if anything. And precipitation-wise, finally, for the 12th to the 18th of August. So, again, really weak signals. Perhaps a bit of signal for central parts of, uh, of the Med to be turning a little bit wetter. Also, perhaps for southern parts of England into northern France, maybe a little bit wetter than average there. Conversely, Scotland and Northern Ireland look a little bit drier than average, and possibly a few hints are still being a bit drier over Scandinavia. So, maybe by this point, by the middle of August, we're beginning to see high pressure going a bit further north, perhaps, possibly even... Uh, becoming a northern blocking feature, maybe starting to send the jet stream southwards, which would indicate the chance of going to a rather cooler, more unsettled pat pat as we get through to the middle of August. However, the signals are really too weak to be able to say that, certainly with any level of confidence. It's just not a strong enough signal, really, to be able to say 
that that's what's happening. A few hints, but uh, not enough really to work with. So that's how we're talking for the next month. Uh, starting off very warm and hot in the weekend across most parts of Europe. The cool cold of an average temperature anomalies are across Western Russia. And we keep this broad setup going through to the end of July as well. August, a little bit of a mixed bag there. Very weak signals, uh, really. Overall, it looks like it's going to stay quite warm across most parts of Europe through the first half of August. And uh, not much in the way of a signal for precipitation, but I would suspect, at least early on in August, it's likely to still be quite dry. Maybe going a bit more unsettled by the middle of the month. We'll know more about that, I think, uh, next week. Right, so that's it for the ECM 30-day look ahead for, uh, to, for this week. For today, we shall be back later on with your week to take maybe update, and that's going to include all of the latest information and developments on uh, this week's hot weather. So, come back for that then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.